네, 안녕하십니까 저는 어... Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am Director Song Jae-hwa from HMM. Today, um, in this forum, I'd like to talk about the biggest challenge in shipping industry and HMM's response to that challenge. Currently, I'm working uh, at Alliance Business and chartering, and in addition to them, I'm in charge of environment regulation compliance at um, HMM. And I'd like to talk about two key challenges in shipping industry and how HMM is responding to those two key challenges. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Song. I'm working for HMM as a senior vice president. Uh, I'm in charge of the network alliance and chartering and sale and purchase and environmental regulations. Uh, today, I'm going to present to you the major challenges uh, facing the shipping industry and how we HMM is responding to those challenges. Uh, let me start with the alliance environment. Uh, nowadays, the alliance is a very key factor for carriers to the business and survive in the shipping industry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, without alliance cooperation, it's very difficult to serve the customers' various demand and requirement. So for HMM, to join the alliance is very, very critical. But there are very big changes from the last 10 years. In 2010, there were 20 carriers in the world competing each other in East and West trade, 20 carriers. But uh, through the bankruptcy and some acquisition and some merge by other carrier, only 10 carriers survived now. So this market is very monopolistic market. There's small, small players in the shipping industry now. Uh, 2010, the total two carriers, 20 carriers occupying 12 million TU capacity of the world. But now, 10 carriers occupying more than 25 million TUs. You know what, the, currently the, over the world, total capacity is around 30 million something. So 25 million means almost majority of majority. And the change in the global capacity share of the top 10 carriers is even more and more dramatic. In the past, it was 61% market share. Now, 84%. And including order book of the mega carrier, it may exceed 90%. And the thing is, now huge investment is being made by mega carrier. So that can be investment because of bigger getting more money in the last COVID-19 period. So those huge investment is accelerating this concentration and also monopolistic power. So this market, the, I don't think the new player can easily join. Yeah? Current players are very, very strong, so not easily allowed to allow the easy, new, 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 new face getting into the market. So it's very difficult for me to predict who will survive in the next 10 years. Uh, if I compare the online structure change, which began in 1995, in its state in 2010, and 15 and 25. The alliance has shifted from a state uh, with the very numerous and diverse and yeah, many participants in the past. But now, only seven carriers are joining alliance and three carriers remaining as uh, independent. And from the February next year, the one carrier, MSC, 
they will operate independently without any alliance operation. But as you can see the paper, the next, uh, last month I made a deal with MSC to make a corporate strategic cooperation in, in Europe trade. That trade is only trade MSC will join as an alliance, not an alliance, but cooperation. Yeah, this is the top 10 carriers total capacity as of now. MSC over 6 million. And Batam, Yangming, around 70, 700,000 something. But let me back in the past. <laughs> 2010, uh, Musk was number one, 2.1 million. And MSC was 1.8 million. Now MSC is 6 million and plus order book 2 million, going to be 8 million, 8 million. Almost dominating the market. Uh, but critical point is uh, right side. Please see the right side. There is the proportion of the older ships, age over 20 years, prop proportion of the older ship in their total capacity and their order book. For MSC, the proportion of the older ship within their order book is over 50%, which means many of their investment is to replace current older ship to cope with the, the environmental regulations. Okay. Uh, next one is uh, environmental regulations. This is another major change we are facing. But I will stress that the acceleration of the, uh, acceleration of the environmental regulations. Uh, you can see the table, the climate warming, climate warming is definitely confirmed by actual data. So to respond to this, currently there are many kind of the regulations and regulatory measures, penalty, new rule is now being developed in a back and forth way between the EU and IMO. So by these many kind of the regulations, uh, we are now showing the vision of the achieving net zero and carbon neutral by 2050. But I'm not sure all carriers can, can, be, can prepare for this. These are major key regulations already introduced and will be introduced next year. Uh, left one is EU ETS. This is governing the greenhouse gas emission. Already in place. But more important one is purely my time. That is governing the carbon intensity of the fuel which we are using. So unless we meet that rule in the, in, in the, in the future, our total cost including fuel plus environmental regulation is very huge. No company can sustain. So now, the, including HMM, all carriers are exploring ways to reduce the carbon intensity of the fuel they are using. So we are now testing ammonia, hydroxygen, and even SMR. Many options are on the table. But currently, LNG is the most preferred option at the moment. Yeah, so um, as I mentioned, uh, to addressing the environmental regulation is inevitably incurs huge cost. Uh, from the middle of the 2030, 2030 uh, we can see the very sharp increase of the pure real my time and EU it has cost will surge. So 2050, actual fuel cost is 600 something, but Another regular cost is more than 2,000 something. So, unless we prepare, we cannot survive. Very, very critical. So, like uh, the HMM or some mega carriers, I don't think we are mega carrier, but we can prepare. 
But what I'm, what I'm concerned is uh, small carriers in Inter-Asia or Caribbean or Europe inside, I'm not sure they can prepare this kind of rule because this requires huge investment, huge investment. So this like a, a cost is not sustainable for all carriers. So it's very essential to prepare the eco-friendly policy uh, and investment. So far, I explained the rule set by the EU, which means the uh, EU rule apply for the trade related to the EU only, European Union, right? But now IMO is preparing new rule, so-called near-term basket measure. This may apply for the whole trade or the world, not only Europe. This will apply to the Inter-Asia and USA and South America. Then all carriers need to yeah, cope with this new regulation. Uh, they are aiming for the 2027. Uh, and uh, IMO rule, my personal evaluation is IMO rule is more challenging than the goal of the period of my time. They are governing the same thing. Carbon intensity, same, same thing, but the rule itself is more challenging, I think. Uh, so um, let me explain how we are responding to these challenges. Um, yeah, this is the greenhouse gas emission for the TU kilometer. Now, HMM is, has uh, the most efficient and lowest, lowest greenhouse gas emission per TO kilometers over the world. I cannot mention the name of the carrier here, but they are all top 10 or top 12 or top 15 carriers. HMM is now a number one carrier in terms of the CO2 equivalent emission. Then why? Because the age of the, the vessel, HM operating, is the youngest of the world. The average age of our vessel is nine, nine years something, average is 12 years. But some carriers, the average age of the vessel is more than 15 years, which means you can see the right table. AG directly involved in the CII rating. So younger age vessel can easily get the higher, higher the grade in CIA. Yeah? Uh, next one is capacity size. Uh, HMM is now possessing the largest vessel size on average. Currently, the 48% of the, our total capacity is consisting of the large vessel over 15K. And we are going to invest bigger vessel, like a 10K to 13K, and 16, 24. So we will manage our portfolio with more than 10K ships. And for smaller ships, like a 4K, 5K, 6K, we will charter. This is our strategy. By the kind of the management of the portfolio, uh, we can maintain the, our portfolio as, uh, with a very big size vessel and economically friendly and more efficiently. Yeah? This is uh, my basic strategy. HMM has already begun the investment in eco-friendly ships, the LNG powered and methanol powered. So from this year, uh, next, next month, we will get delivered the LNG powered and methanol powered ships. So definitely we, we uh, at the first group to actually operating eco-friendly ships in the market. And also, 
We are now researching ammonia fuel as an alternative in a cooperation with the many, the, like uh, Lotte or POSCO. We are now the, jointly researching the alternative fuels, alternative fuel ammonia. And even we are now studying the SMR engine. This is a small modular reactors. And maybe from next year, we are, will operate the electric truck in USA. Because uh, time, as time goes by, this environmental regulation will spread not only ocean to the inner side. So we are preparing electric truck transportation structure in USA. So uh, you are now busily <laughs> yeah, preparing for the future. Hmm. So in the past, I, I, I said the uh, international standard, natural standard is target is 2050, but HMM is now aiming for 2045, which is five years ahead of the international standard natural target. And also, the last month we, we announced the new investment plan until 2030. Currently, our, our capacity is around a million, but we will grow up to 1.5 million until 2030. And as I said, uh, most of the investment will be uh, made for the eco friendly larger ships with our own, not own. We can, we can, we can uh, utilize the finance, but um, anyway. So, those ships will be built as uh, eco friendly. Then, 2030, our uh, eco friendly portion, best portion is more than 40%. Then, definitely, we are okay to prepare the environmental issue. So, all in all, the HMA is now the, the only carrier in Korea to the business in East and West trade. I mean, the East and West trade means uh, TPS and Europe trade. We are only carrier. So, uh, we don't want any yeah, chance, and we don't want to experience the same thing back to 10 years ago, when, when, when HMM was in a big trouble. So we are now very keen attention, paying very keen attention to, this, to these two major challenges. And the vision is we grow up to 3 million something in the middle of the, to the middle of the 2030. That is our vision. Um, that's all I prepare today. And a question I will, yeah. Maybe not. <laughs> okay, thank you for your attention. Thank you.